The Nintendo NX is now known as the Nintendo Switch, and a whole bunch of people out there are excited, confused, and nervous, and maybe they don't know exactly what to make of this brand new system. Did Nintendo mess up, or did they do well? My fellow residents, let's discuss. <laughs> So let's just get this out of the way right now. I love the name Nintendo Switch. I think it's a very, very good name. I think it's a lot better than Wii. I think it's a lot better than Wii U. And it's a name that I want to get on a shirt. I made the Switch. The Nintendo Switch kind of sounds interesting because it's switching up the industry, switching up the concept of what a video game home system is all supposed to be about. It's a mobile system and a home system at the same time, switching it up. I dig it, I like the name. I know that's just kind of a personal opinion on that front, but I actually think that name is cool. But what I think is even cooler is the fact that it is a portable video game system and a home console all at the same time. Guys, I've been wanting this for a super long time. Nintendo has made the best mobile gaming platforms on the planet. From the Game Boy to the DS to the 3DS, Nintendo has never failed in the way that they've made their portable systems Unless you consider the Virtual Boy a portable system, but I don't. Regardless though, they've had a great experience with that stuff on the marketplace. And to see them take their home console market, which is sort of struggling right now with the Wii U, and merge it with their portable systems, I think that's a really smart move. Now because the console and the controller are sort of one in one, they kind of work together in the same way, when you put all the pieces together on that screen, it looks exactly like a Wii U controller. Now why I'm okay with this is because when it's portable, it makes for a really good experience because you've got a nice big screen and the controls off to the left and right. But the ability to use a secondary controller like the one they were showing in the video is exciting because well, Nintendo's always been pretty damn good at controllers. One thing I think that's kind of weird is that the main system doesn't have a D-pad, which, to my knowledge, is the very first time Nintendo has released a video game console without a D-pad. Which is true, as long as you take into consideration that they totally didn't use D-pads with the TV Game 6 systems. Ooh. So, that's a little bit nuts. At least the traditional D-pad that they've always used, you know, the little cross thing. Not having that is strange, but you know what? I'm okay with that. The Wii U had a good controller, it just wasn't good when you were wanting to play games on your TV, because when you're playing games on a big TV in front of you, it sucked to look at a screen. And with this system, they know that people don't want to do that, so they're taking the screen out and hiding it behind a piece of plastic so you don't look at it and you focus just on the TV in front of you. Smart move, Nintendo. Props. Now let's talk about some negative aspects. Now this console is going to have far less powerful hardware compared to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One simply because it's a portable form factor design. Which means that if it's movable and you can take it on a bus somewhere, they can't really stick the same kind of architecture that you have on a PS4 and an Xbox One on the system itself. That means that Nintendo's first party games are probably going to be designed in a very specific way to utilize the hardware. Now the rumor going around the mill right now is that NVIDIA is helping out with Nintendo making this little thing, so it's probably going to be some kind of Tegra-based graphics chip of some sort like that, which is pretty cool. The Tegra can be pretty powerful in its own right, but it isn't as powerful as the Xbox One or PlayStation 4. You also have an additional problem when it comes to the actual cartridge sizes that they're using with this thing. Now, currently on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, Call of Duty is coming out. You know, the new one? It's 130 gigs because it has two games in one. Activision is listed as one of the companies that's actually going to be backing Nintendo and making third-party games for this, so if they're going to release the new Call of Duty on the Nintendo Switch, that cartridge size is going to have to be about 130 gigs, which is a little bit crazy. Plus, the game itself that they're releasing has to be downgraded to work on portable hardware and not the hardware that you're seeing on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Additionally, if they're going to be able to use downloadable features and have downloadable games onto the system itself, that portable system is going to have to have one hell of a big portable hard drive built into it. These are things that work against the Nintendo Switch simply because portable gaming is limited just by the nature of how it's designed. 
So unless the system is going to be super, super expensive, it's probably not going to have the best specs in the world and probably is going to harm the way a lot of developers actually make games on this thing. The portable gaming aspect of the Switch is possibly one of the coolest things about the console, but it's also its largest flaw. Yeah, you've got all these companies saying they're going to make games on it, but if they can't get their games to run on that hardware, they're going to have to drastically reduce the features. And remember, this happened already with the Wii U. This happened with the Wii. And eventually we got games on those systems that didn't reflect the same kind of quality of the games that existed on other platforms at the exact same time. Eventually, all these developers just left the Wii U alone and they stopped releasing games on the console altogether. And I seriously don't want to see that happen with the Switch. Yes, it's going to be portable. Yes, we're going to see a lot of really cool first party games come directly from Nintendo. But if we don't see a strong third party support, it might really hurt them. Look, guys, right now, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One have years of being on the market and allowing people to go out and buying these systems in huge numbers. When this Switch comes out, it has to be able to take a whole bunch of people and bring them into the forefront of wanting one of these systems. I know I'm going to buy a Switch as soon as it comes out. Day one, I guarantee I'm going to be getting this system. My worry, though, is that I don't think it's going to replace anything I'm doing at home with the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One. When I leave to go somewhere and play games somewhere on a bus or on a train or something, maybe I'll be playing it that way, but they were showing off a couple of instances I didn't agree with how people would actually be portably playing these things. There's like a little kickstand on the back of the console and you can like set it up on a table and have your controllers wirelessly while you're playing it on a train or a plane or something like that. And I don't see myself doing that. I hate taking out a laptop in public and playing with games and stuff, so I can't see myself setting up this console in some really weird scenario like that. I'm going to be playing it like a portable system together in one. But the system is also a little bit big. It didn't look like it was going to be able to fit in my pocket, which makes me feel like it's not going to be the greatest portable system in the world. You see, my cell phone fits in my pocket. It's pretty small. The 3DS is actually pretty small as well if you get one of the smaller ones, and it can fit in your pocket. But this one looks to be a little bit bigger than both of those. Just think of it this way. Would you be able to take the Wii U controller and stuff it in your pocket and have that be portable? No unless you have gigantic pockets, or a really big purse, or a backpack. I need a backpack for you, my love. Oh, I got one here, but there's something in it. There's a, what the hell is that? All right, you can you go. Well, it's a big backpack, but... Outside of that, though, I don't think this system is gonna be nearly as portable as Nintendo's claiming it's gonna be. Now, all that being said, I think there is one big problem with this console that I don't think anyone's really addressing right now. The modular design. Now, by that I mean having those little controllers on the side that you can hook up to it and, and when you're at home, you take the system, put it in like a toaster, and then you have like a weird little middle brick part that you hook up the controllers to. Guys, what the hell are you doing? That's really, really strange. That's a lot of movable, easy to lose parts for no reason. Look, this is essentially what it should be. We should have that little toaster thing, and then a Wii U-like looking system that just plugs into the toaster, and then we have a secondary controller at home that we use. The reason why I say we should be doing that with this system is simply because if you have less movable, exchangeable parts, there's less of a chance people are going to be losing these things in public. I don't think it's a smart move for them to have a modular controller design, simply because I've owned a DS and a 3DS for a number of years now, and you know how the screen gets really loose after a couple months of like opening and closing it after a while? Imagine that happening with a controller where you keep sliding it out, sliding it back in, having it click in and having it click out. Eventually it's going to get a little bit loose, and I like a controller that's tight and well designed and feels strong in the hands, and I think having one that's got three parts to it might feel a little bit wobbly after a couple of months of use, or maybe just a couple of days of use. Of course, that's just guesswork. I don't know how well this controller is going to be designed. And taking Nintendo's pedigree in the past, I imagine this is going to be a very good controller that a lot of people are going to like. But it worries me a little. At the end of the day, I think that this system is going to be pretty interesting for a lot of people. I'm excited to take a look at it. But I also remember exactly what I said about the Wii U all those years ago.
I'm still kind of trying to figure out exactly what Nintendo's game plan is because the system seems to do a lot of things at once, but not any one thing incredibly well. The Wii U isn't about the console, it's all about its controller. And if you don't like the controller, you're not going to like the console. It's as simple as that. And I think we're pretty much looking at the exact same thing. They've got a lot of really neat ideas, a really cool concept, and it's going to be something that people are absolutely going to love or they're absolutely going to hate. And at the end of the day, if the third party market doesn't really adopt to this thing, Nintendo might be dead in the water.